Now I'm going to show you how to find the x-intercepts. I already showed you how to graph a linear equation, and I'm going to pick up right with the last equation I just did, y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds. Remember, we already had that in set in y equals, so I already have that there. If you want, if you don't have it there anymore, you can go ahead and type that in. And when we hit graph, or remember, if it's not set up to a, um, a, a standard viewing window, which actually mine was and I had changed the window, I'm gonna, going to hit number six for a standard viewing window. That took me back to the negative 10 to 10 in both the x and the y direction. Now, remember that if you hit trace, it will generally tell you the y-intercept. Another way that you can find that is if you hit second calc and if you type in the word value, if you just type in enter, you can actually pick any value you want for x and it will give you the corresponding y value. So I can type in x equals zero and hit enter and it will tell me the y-intercept. So in case when you hit tra trace, it doesn't tell you the y-intercept, that's another way to find that. Now, often we want to know the y-intercept. Well, if it was in slope-intercept form, we already knew the y-intercept down here, in this case, was 5 thirds. But if we want to find the x-intercept, remember that's where, um, when y equals zero. Well, you can't type in a value on the calculator, but what you can do is if we go second calc, which is the same as the trace key, when I hit the second button, then I'm accessing all the things in blue on my calculator. So it would be the calc. That's why I say second calc. Then I want to find the, the I want to find when y is zero. Well, that has another name, and that's also called the zero of the function. The zero of the function is just another way to say the x-intercept. Oops. So on your calculator, it actually will call it a zero. So I'm going to click on number two. I could have just typed in a two, or I could scroll down to number two. And it will say this odd thing. It will ask for a left bound. Well, you need to kind of know, here's my zero right here where the arrow is pointing. So what the calculator is wanting me to do is I have to pick a value that's on the left side of the point I'm trying to locate. Well, it's flashing on the left side, so that's okay. I'm just going to hit enter. Then it will ask me for a right bound. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key until I go past the point that I'm trying to find. So now I'm past the point where it crosses the x-axis, so I'm going to hit enter, and then it asks me to make a guess. Now notice up here it gives me these arrows on either side, kind of creating a boundary. So I'm just going to hit the left arrow key so that my cursor is blinking right about the spot where my x-intercept, it doesn't have to be right on it, and I hit enter again. And then it tells me that my zero is 2.5, and so then I know that the x-intercept is 2.5 comma 0. And the calculator did that work for me. Now if I had done this by hand, then I would have, remember the x-intercept is when y equals 0, so I would have been solving this equation. And I could do that. I would subtract 5 thirds, and then I would be dividing by negative 2 thirds, which is the same as multiplying by negative 3 halves. And if I do that, I will get 5 halves or 2.5. So the calculator can help you find those by using the second calc 0. Let's take a look at one more of those just to make sure we know how to do that. If we have y equals 3x plus 2. Let's go ahead and type that in. Now let me just let you know something else you can do. Suppose that I might come back to this equation. I can actually go to the equal sign and hit enter. And what that does, it's like a toggle switch. And so that just turns that equation off so it won't graph it. 
but it's still there if I wanted to use it later. So now in Y2, I'm going to type in 3x plus 2. And if I hit graph, it will plot just the one that was selected. So remember, we already knew the y-intercept, but if I hit trace, it will probably tell me. So we have 0, 2 is the y-intercept. And if I want to know the x-intercept, I'm going to do second calc 0, which is number 2. Remember, I have to do the left bound, right bound. Now this time I have to go, well, I'm going to hit the left arrow because I want it to be on the left of my x-intercept. So the x-intercept where it crosses the x-axis. I needed it to be to the left. I'm going to hit enter. Now it's asking for a right bound. So I'm going to use my right arrow key till I go past my intercept. Hit enter. Now I just really need to go one space to the left. But if you want it to be about where it is, hit enter. And there you have your y-intercept, which is negative 0.6 repeating. So we get negative, and that's actually negative two-thirds, comma, zero. For interruption, these students need to report to... Well, now you know I'm at school doing that. Um, so we have our x-intercept negative two-thirds, zero. Now, one other thing I want to mention, notice that um, this value right here is stored. It says x equals. If I hit second, quit and I exit that menu, and if I hit the button X right now and hit enter, it has that value stored. That's the last thing I just did, so it stores it there. So if you wanted to change that to a fraction, if you hit um, the math key and change it to a fraction, it will tell you negative two-thirds. In case you didn't know that, um, you can actually change that back to a fraction. So that's kind of a nice trick to know.